And as you mark 18 years since Katrina, the storm impacted so many people, including current and past members here at WDSU. Joining us now is a man who covered this storm at great lengths and all while dealing with his own personal road to recovery. I have the honor and privilege of sharing this desk right now with former WDSU legendary anchor Norman Robinson. Norman, it's an honor, sir. Thank you so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. Well, you're welcome. Um, 18 years. When you hear the number 18, what, what goes through your mind? 18 years since Katrina. The shock, the unbelievable anxiety, the frustration, the sense of hopelessness. It was a, an episode in our lives that uh, changed many of us forever. Because as a news person, you somehow think that you are invulnerable. You know, somehow it doesn't affect you. I can remember when I covered the uh, crash of uh, 759 in, um, in uh, Kenner. It was an out-of-body experience. It's like it was something that was happening to other people and I was watching. Katrina was an experience that uh, affected us all. And you talk about affecting us all. I mean, you were dealing with your own, you know, personal battles, you know, battling after um, this storm. Uh, for our viewers who may not be familiar with what happened to you and your family 18 years ago, I mean, you basically lost your home. I lost my home, but more importantly, I lost contact with my granddaughter. We, uh, we evacuated on the fly. I think I got, I had gotten off the news after about, 18 hours and I'd gone home to rest on a Saturday morning and I was awakened by the then news director who said that we are evacuating people to um, our sister station in Jackson, Mississippi. And I was rushing trying to get my wife out, trying to get my, my granddaughter out. My granddaughter was going to go uh, and evacuate with my ex-wife her maternal grandmother. And they were rushing to get out. My wife didn't want to go. She was saying, like, I'm not going. I remember the last time they told us to get out and nothing happened. I said, you're going this time. I mean, look at the, look at the Gulf of Mexico. That whole, the whole Gulf of Mexico um, was, was, was occupied by that monstrous storm. I said, do you see that storm? I said, you're going. So I went to Jackson, Mississippi. She went to Atlanta with, with uh, one of our dearest friends. And my, my granddaughter, I didn't know where she was going with my ex-wife at the time. But after the storm hit and we got word that the city was, you know, 80% underwater and, and people had just scattered, I couldn't find my granddaughter. For like, for five days I was calling the Red Cross because they had this number that you call if you're looking for, for missing people. Yeah. I couldn't find my, my, my granddaughter for five days. And it affected me in ways that I never um, would have imagined, Daryl. And that is, I began stuttering on the air. I began, I, I mean, I couldn't, I, I, was, I was trying to do my job, but at the same time I was thinking about my, my granddaughter and I, and I was just thinking the worst thoughts. And um, every night I would go to bed, try to sleep, I couldn't sleep. I was calling Red Cross around the clock. And finally, I got a call five days later from um, my wife saying that my ex-wife had contacted her saying that they were okay in Picayune, Mississippi. And guess what? That's where the eye of the storm went. Oh. Oh, the eye gosh. of the storm went through Mississippi. And so the good people at Hearst, you know, our, our company headquartered in New York, um, allowed me to take a photographer to go to Picayune, Mississippi to find my granddaughter. Mm. And we were able to find her and then take her back to Jackson, Mississippi and get her uh, shipped out to Houston, Texas to live with, with uh, my, uh, my siblings there. Five days. Five. The agony. Five. The agony. Five agonizing days. Can you imagine? Mm. I mean, I, I don't th want to th imagine. Th that the house was gone, that's one thing. but. But to think that, you know, your, your granddaughter didn't survive and somehow got lost because, you know, 1,400 people lost their lives in that storm. Yes, sir. And that's just 
the, the number that we know of. We don't know about the people who just washed out in, in, the, in, the, uh, in the Gulf of Mexico and were never accounted for. Absolutely. We got less than a minute left, and I got to ask you this. A lot of folks say that uh, after Katrina, their lives and, and the, the, their thoughts and everything they've done moving forward has changed forever. Is that the same thing for you? Oh, absolutely. The, the, the neighborhood that we enjoy, the, the, uh, the families that we were close to, um, the little children that grew up with my, my, my granddaughter, uh, well, the place where I used to go out on the neutral ground and hit golf balls and, uh, and ride my bicycle. And um, the neighborhood that I so loved and enjoyed in uh, New Orleans East was, was gone. The neighborhood that we knew uh, and enjoyed was, was gone and it will never be the same again. And even people who still live there, and I still miss that place because it was the place that I was most comfortable. Even the people who live there now talk about how the change has made the vibe different. Even though most of the homes have, have been, you know, rebuilt and reconstructed. But the um, spirit of, of Katrina is it, still it, there. The spirit. It's still there. Yeah, it's the spirit. And the spirit of the, the, the homogenous kind of, of, of relationship that everybody had, that is gone. It's a you stark know. reminder, but it's yeah. also a, a big reminder, too, that, that the folks here in New Orleans came back. Yeah. Try to do the best they can. Very to resilient. And, and try to make it yeah. as best as they can, even though it, for some folks it still doesn't feel the same yeah. pre-Katrina. Um, but there's no place like New Orleans. No place not like New Orleans. No place like New Orleans, and thank God for it. Um, this is the only place I've ever felt like I was at home. And it's because the people are so special. Norman Robinson, former legendary <laughs> WDSU news anchor, thank you so much for joining us, giving us your, your experiences and the things that you dealt with. You know, the viewers are, are really fortunate and blessed to, to still have you here to talk to us and give us everything that you know uh, in that experience because you also set the reminder of Hurricane Katrina, guiding people through that time. Well, it's an honor and a privilege to be, to, thank to you. be here it's, with you. It's an honor for me to have been asked to share my thoughts. Thank you, sir. You appreciate welcome. it. Thank you, sir. And for a look back on Hurricane Katrina 18 years later, you can download the free WDSU mobile app.